Thank you for joining us this Christmas Eve night. It's a, a privilege to have you here with us. And we will be doing our candlelight and singing um, towards the end of this. But I, first off, I want to share what the Lord has put on my heart. But before I do, let's pray. And I, and I want to thank those who've joined us online as well. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for another opportunity I have to share your word. And I just pray, Lord, that it will minister to our hearts, so it will encourage us this night, Lord, the, the reason why you're here, the reason for the season. And so I thank you for these who've come out. I ask you to open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what you would have this night. In Jesus' name, amen. If I was to title the message, it would be Emmanuel. God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. The last time I shared, I shared on those that, the people that God put in, in that Christmas story that played a part in the Christmas story. So I, I, I t uh, talked about Joseph and Mary. I talked about the shepherds, the wise men, about Zach Zachariah and Elizabeth, about Simeon and Anna. But tonight, I want to talk about Emmanuel, God with us. So we're going to take a look at Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah prophesied this 700 years before it happened. So I will tell you, God had a plan way back when the beginning of time, God had a plan. And 700 years before, Isaiah prophesied. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, it says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph found out that Mary was expecting with the child, he knew, and he knew it wasn't his, he obviously didn't believe Mary when she told him about it, and he was going to divorce her um, privately um, so that the crowds wouldn't get on her. But an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and told him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife because what was conceived in her was by the Holy Spirit. Emmanuel, God with us. So what was prophesied 700 years before is now the beginning of that being fulfilled in Matthew. And it's the beginning of, of God's plan. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, Jesus speaking here to the disciples just before he left to go ascend into heaven. He said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Emmanuel. God with us. Jesus is telling his disciples to go make disciples and, and to all nations, but he's letting them know he will always be there through the Holy Spirit down the road. He will always be there. In Hebrews chapter 13, 5, it says, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Emmanuel, God with us. So I will tell you, this name, Emmanuel, holds great significance for you and me. It holds great significance. Christ came to stay. God came to dwell among us and to reside within us forever, forever to be with us. The baby Jesus didn't come, just come, um, to walk among us. He came to deliver us and set us right with God. The coming of Jesus meant God the Father had now sent his Son to deliver the world from sin. This was the beginning of God's plan put in motion. It was the beginning. Thirty-three years later, God's plan was completed. Jesus died on that cross, and he rose again three days later. And that's why we have Easter. His plan was completed. So he had him be born, and then he had him die and rise again for the reconciliation of man. That was God's plan. For those who believe, we are reconciled back to God 
through his son, Jesus. For us that believe, no challenge, no matter the challenge, you are not alone. Whether you are in need of deliverance, strength, hope, Emmanuel is present. Emmanuel is present. He's not some far off God. He is right there beside you. This very moment, through the Holy Spirit, he is right there. You see, God is with us, and we can never be separated from his love. How do I know that? Romans 8, verses 38 and 39 says, For I am con convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything, else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We cannot be separated from him if we stay with him. God is with us and we can accomplish his will for us. Philippians 2.13 says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Again, God with us. In Philippians 4, 47, it says that, we're going to read that, but it says you don't have to, to live with fear, or worry, or anxiety. Look at, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The best news of all, Emmanuel, God is with us. On March 2nd, 1791, John Wesley, an evangelist who we listen to his sermons still today, and we read them, he lifted up a feeble little arm, opened his eyes, and exclaimed on, for the very last time on his deathbed these words. The best of all of this is God is with us. God has promised to be with us in life, in death, and for all eternity. God with us. Emmanuel. He is for us. He is in us. God is with us in the good times and God is with us in the hard times. And no matter what lies ahead in your life, Jesus Christ is still and always will be Emmanuel, God with us. He overcame everything that stood between us and him so that we could experience his love, his peace, his grace, his joy, and power in our day-to-day -day lives. No matter what we walk through, he walks through it with us. He is Emmanuel still today. And there was a college student who um, found Christ at, at, at the college she was attending, and someone had shared with her, and that's why I say it's so important that we share Christ. And someone led her to the Lord, and she said that as she was growing up, she, she was, lived in a great family, loving family, but Christ was never mentioned in her family. So she said at Christmas Eve, they would have family come over and friends, and they'd have a meal together, and then they'd s sit around or stand around the piano, and they would sing songs and, and laugh and have a good time. So she said the first Christmas that, that she had given her heart to the Lord, she went home, and she said, we had family and friends and a meal, and we all went around the piano, and we started singing. But she said, I knew that something was missing. I knew there was. So she said, I, I slipped out, and I walked to church in the snow. And she said, and I found people on Christmas Eve with candles in their hands around the piano, and they were singing. And she said, the presence and the joy that filled my heart. She goes, this is what I was missing. I knew I was missing something. So she said after it was all done and she had that joy in her heart and all and she, she went home and she walked in the door and they all stopped what they were doing and they said, hey, where have you been? And her sister said, she's been to church. So she thought, okay, they must see the, the, my red face from the cold walking from the church. 
But she knew really it was on the inside. Jesus was on the inside, and it was shown on her countenance. What is the reason for this season? It's Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. She had the privilege of being able to share Jesus with them on her first Christmas of accepting the Lord herself. She was able to share it with her family. The God of the universe is still with us and at work today in the form of the Holy Spirit. This means we have an even more intimate relationship with Jesus because of the Holy Spirit living within us. You see, Jesus walked side by side with the disciples, but we have the Holy Spirit living in us. So this means God is literally with us every moment of the day. He's with us in every circumstance, in the good and the bad times. God is with us. The Robertson, uh, Ted Robertson's home in Colorado, his home was one of 500 that were destroyed by the Black Forest fire in June 2013. He says, well, he was allowed, when, when he was allowed to return to his home to sift through the ash and the rubble, he was hoping to find a precious family heirloom made by his wife, a tiny ceramic figure of baby Jesus about the size of a postage stamp. As he seen, searched the charred remains of their home, he kept wondering, is baby Jesus still here? In a corner of what used to be the garage, that Ted Robinson discovered the burned remains of a nativity scene, and there he found the baby Jesus, figuring undamaged by the flames. And he told the news station that day, we have gone from apprehension to hope that we're going to recover some parts of our life that we thought were lost. Is Jesus still here? He is indeed, without a shadow of a doubt. And that is the everlasting wonder of Christmas. God with us. You see, he came to us that day in Bethlehem because he is still working with us. He had a plan. He still has a plan today, and he still looks for men and women who will serve him. We, he looks for co common people to serve an uncommon God. Emmanuel, God with us. That day in Bethlehem, God entered our world. He came to us. We didn't go to him. He came to us. Again, Emmanuel, God with us, because he had a plan. And I want to read to you a, just a short letter from Jesus as if Jesus wrote this. He says, you won't need a special star. I'm no longer just in Bethlehem. I'm right there where you are. You may not be aware of me and the celebrations, amid the celebrations. You'll have to look beyond the stores and all the decorations. But if you take a moment from your list of things to do, and listen to your heart, you'll find I'm waiting there for you. You're the one I want to be with. You're the reason that I came. And you'll find me in the stillness, and I'm whispering your name. Love Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. So this Christmas season, as it, as it's almost here, remember, not just the shepherds and all in the songs, but it's Emmanuel, God with us. And in just a few minutes, or right now, I guess, my husband is gonna come back and we're gonna do, we're gonna dim the lights and we're gonna have the candlelight and sing a few songs. And, and just keep your eyes and heart on Emmanuel, God with us.